our God, he is alive. Amen, saints. Some people were yelling in football, saying yesterday louder than y'all. Our God, he is alive. You know, again, that the word fan, and again, in the sports context, a fan is short for fanatic. People lose their minds on something that's just a game. My condolences to all of you that are enjoying your offseason thus far. But the bottom line, the bottom line is this. Some of y'all been talking to me all year. I've been waiting for this moment. And I, hopefully you won't have anything to say to me tonight. But nevertheless, in the game of life, this human race, there is a definitive finish line. And that's physical death. But see, that's a finish line on this time side of life. There's a place called eternity. And so recognize this in sports. You all know I'm a sports fan, so I'll use the example and do my best to explain it to those who are not. The same team doesn't win every single year all the time. Only in one context. It's fate. In, the, in Christian, Christianity and religion, there's only one team that's going to win. And the victory has already been claimed. So imagine knowing you can win the championship only if you got to get on that said team, uses some legal language, you got to get on said team, follow exactly what the captain, the master says, and you can make it. But yet that is so hard because we get in the way. We want to do things our way. I think it was last week there was a football game and the team was winning clearly. And they were on the one-yard line, and they said, the coach said, take a knee. But then the players said, we want to do things our way. And they scored and rubbed it in, and the coaches and the other coaches didn't like that so much. We do the same thing spiritually. I know what the Bible says, but she got on my nerves. Can y'all relate to that? Let me look at the clock. Can anybody relate to that? I know what the Bible says. I know I need to forgive, but this one hurts too much. Good morning. I sure want to preach today. I, can you tell? And, and we will absolutely positively watch the clock in terms of wisdom. But we got something to, to share with you today. And I will just say this to each and every one of you. Psychological uh, psychology teaches us. That's a study of the mind. Don't don't be alarmed that it takes about 21 days to form a habit. It's the 14th day of a new year. And some folks have brought those same bad habits from 2023 into 2024. You were late in 23, you're late in 24. Stop, make the change while you still can. Amen. Some people were ghosting folks in 23, still ghosting the church in 2024. I got to tell you straight. Amen. So now I hope, and just say amen. If you formed a good new habit in 2024, just say amen. That's not bad. That's good. I, that, was, that was more than I expected. That's wonderful. For those of you that are on Zoom, if you can get off Zoom in 2024, if you're able, get off Zoom. This is where it's at. We got some folks that are in the hospital that are Zooming in. We got some folks that are physically unable that are there. But those that can get up on tomorrow, make sure they're work on time, and yet you make sure you're sitting near a computer on Sunday morning, maybe we can change that a little bit. Amen. <clears throat> we don't pull punches. We got to tell it straight. Why do, we, why do we say that? Because defending the faith. We're going to use some religious, we're going to use some legal, but most importantly, we're going to, it's going to be scriptural. There's a lesson. This lesson, I'm going to make sure. I'm putting this lesson in both chats, all the sisters and the brothers, because you need to send this to somebody today. If you know somebody that's suffering, I would ask you right up front, send this lesson to this morning and tonight's full PowerPoint. I'm going to make sure I'm giving it to everybody. Because too many people suffering. And there's so many people suffering without a road map. So they don't know where they're going. I call that a spin cycle. I don't know if you've ever been dizzy. I've been dizzy and it's not fun. And there's people that are spiritually dizzy. Emotionally dizzy. When you are dizzy, you don't know which way is up. When you are dizzy, you are actually, you're kind of like, I just need to sit down somewhere. Can anybody relate to what I'm talking about? If not, just keep on living. We're going to talk this morning, and to our visiting friends, thank you for being here. We welcome you wholeheartedly, and we have a, we want to teach you the, the gospel. We've got some brothers that will read some scriptures to reinforce. Uh, most of them will be on the screen for your benefit. 
Our lesson text this morning comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 3 and verses 15. Peter writes, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Three basic points today, and I want you to write these down or just take mental note or just get the CD. Our three basic points today is fence. Some say the best offense is a good defense. Oh, that's going to come into play when we look at the word of God today. Some say the best offense you want to move forward is a good defense. Point number two, we're going to talk about the reality, not the unexpected, uh, coincidental, uh, why me, suffering. The reality of suffering, which means suffering is real. Suffering is not uncommon. All of us will suffer in this life. And we, we've been saying it, the, my goodness, 35 years I've been preaching. I didn't quite get it as a young preacher being trained by seasoned men. They say, son, you're going to have to hold on. People twice, three times your age are going to uh, disrespect you. People won't, they want to hear the word. I'm like, no, what do you mean they want to hear the word? I'm just some young, loud, uh, young preacher. Some things don't change, I guess. <laughs> but my point is, suffering is real. We have to be ready for that. See where I'm pointing? If we're not ready to suffer, we will immediately go into a spin cycle when, not if, when we suffer. And our third and final point today will be defending the faith. We're going to stick to the script, stick to this lesson plan to make sure one, because as I thought about this lesson, as I studied this lesson last night, this week, and even this morning, it hit me hard. Because, and I said, there's so many people that I wish were sitting here that could hear this lesson. So this is going to be up to all of us to make sure you put this in the hands of somebody you know that's suffering. Let's go to work. Sanctify. A couple words I want to define. There's got to be a readiness and willingness. Militarily, you don't go into battle and say, OK, do I need any equipment? Do I need any training? It starts at the very beginning. Some call it basic training. They walk you through the mental. You need to have the mental acumen to handle warfare. You may go hungry. You may be in a dark, secluded place for a long time. So it's your mind. You got to be in a foxhole with total strangers. But yet you can save each other's life. There's got to be a readiness and if you have to go out there and put your life on the line for someone else, are you willing to do that, soldier? Don't respond out loud. So what the Bible is teaching us, and in our lesson text, when Peter says, you know, be ready to give an answer. We, every single day God gives us, family, we got to be ready. And that in 1 Peter 3.15, that's, that's what we're exegeting. Exegete means to take from. What's there? We don't put exegesis to put in something else. We need to add any flavor to God's word. Amen. We need to add nor subtract. So as we exegete, the first word he says is sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. There's no readiness unless we do this. There's your word. Now that it's a verb, which means we, it's something we got to do. Y'all remember English class, right? Some of y'all still in it. So I hope you remember it so you can pass the next test. A verb is an action word. And so with Tahagiazo is the Greek. I give you the Greek only for so you can deepen your notes. The original word for sanctify, hagiazo, which is a verb, something we have to do, not just contemplate. That's like somebody contemplate getting a job. You still broke. I'm going to contemplate sending out my resume. I'm going to contemplate submitting, sending my resume. I'm going to contemplate going to an interview. Well, guess what? You don't have to contemplate being broke. Y'all got it? All right, stay on the line. So to, to consecrate, to sanctify means to make holy. It means to consecrate. That word consecrate is purify. Before we come to worship, key word, before we come to worship, we need to check our, see where I'm pointing? Consecration. It's a preparation. I hope, trust, and pray before you come into the house of the Lord. This building is where the church meets, by the way. The building is not the church. That you check your mind. Do you come in here saying, 
okay, let me think about it. everybody I hate around here and sit down and you come in. It's like, good morning, sister. How you doing? You, that's a hypocrite. So you, you got to check, you know, again. And there's things we can do to consecrate. Let's make this practical. Sunday morning, get up and, you know, make up your bed and you pray, make up your bed. Maybe, you know, just maybe encourage the saints as you come in fellowship. So that process of preparing one's mind. So the Bible says, 1 Peter 3, 15, sanctify the Lord God where? In your hearts. Now, the word, that word heart is not the blood pump the, you know, from a cardiac standpoint. It's a seat of sensibility, the seat of intellect. We make a conscious decision to this is a holy I'm, I'm, worship is holy. Not you sitting down writing your grocery list for the week. I'm here. You're not here. So to sanctify the Lord God, to make holy, to consecrate, to prepare our mind, to set apart, to purify. Amen. If you understand. Sanctify Lord God in your hearts and say, be ready always to give an answer. I love this Greek word apologia. Uh, again, you think about, you know, apologetics, the study of the defense of the gospel. Apologia is a noun. It's a thing. So what we must do as we prepare our mind, the verb is we have to be ready to give a speech in defense. People defend their dissertation. You spend all this time to get your doctor. And I tell you what, I was in, I got eight doctoral out. I only say that for reference. Watch this, because I dropped out. I was like, I ain't want to do this. And when they said you got to do homework tonight by 11.59, it's got to be posted online. I'm like, I'm done with homework, Chante. I said, I quit school. I kid you not. I flew all the way out to Colorado. Rick was with me. He's my witness. They were like, you know, I was talking when I was talking. They were like, you're a subject matter expert in nonprofit leadership. I'm like, yeah, I've been doing it for 30 years. They were like, so you really don't need this. That they, they told the wrong one that. So I'm, I'm waiting on an honorary. I worked that out some other time. But back to the lesson. I'm done with homework. <laughs> As you can see, I'm getting I've gotten over it. So apologia. The answer is a speech in defense. You are ready to answer verbally. Open, you know, when you tell kids, open your mouth. When you, when you, you're growing up, you know, got mama's right here, but you know, somebody give you something and you really would, they give you a dime, you want to give you a quarter and you wanted a dollar, you're like, thank you. Open your mouth, boy, and say, thank you. They had a hard smile. So we make a conscious decision, a readiness of the mind to give a speech in defense, a verbal defense, as in a court of law. So now, why do we use the court of law example? Because when in a court of law, you want to persuade, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Can you imagine being a defense attorney? And you got my man, we use Gail's, I got my man right here who uh, may be guilty. And I said, you know what? Let's, I don't want to waste any of your time. He guilty. He did it. I, you know, I still get paid as a lawyer. He did it. That's a terrible defense attorney. I want to look at details. I want to find the truth. I want to find out, say, you know what? There's no fingerprinting. There's no camera footage. And I will share an example. I'm going to keep it very high level. When I was in college, my senior year in college, a young lady got killed on campus. And I'm sitting in my mama's house all over the news. And let's just say the situation became very uh, emotional. And at the time, sadly, some things like this still happen today. The Toledo Blade, which is a local newspaper, said a young lady was killed on campus. The local news. The, so the, the newspaper for the city said a girl was killed on campus. Student. I'm watching news. Young lady killed on campus. I go on campus. Front page. Three black men killed a young lady. So I was president of, a, of a, you know, an organization, Black Student Union, at that time. And be with me. Stay with, stay with me. Don't lose sight of. I'm giving you a specific example. And I said, why does no other source, all the reputable sources say someone got killed, but yet on campus and the janitors and a lot of people that are working in the cafeteria, they were being harassed. It was, it was really a tough time. Listen to me. So I called the head of I called the campus police in my student leadership role. I said, did, did three black men kill you? He said, sir, the student newspaper took their liberty. Because the police. We never give the, unless we have the facts, we never give the details. I said, do you realize what that's doing on campus? There's race, people are fighting. We got fraternities, uh, uh, men, get young men, and college boys getting drunk and they're threatening people walking on campus because it's happened late at night. So the late night cleaning crew, which happened to be mostly minority, were being harassed. And these were older people. What's my point sharing that? 
I had to give a defense. I had a press conference. I said no major publication gave the gave the detail. And let me fast forward on this story. The person who killed a young lady just happened to be a school police officer who used to date her, followed her on a late night date, shot her multiple times in the back, took the gun, put it in the, the little push up ceiling and then made a call and said three black men killed this young lady. This happened to be a Caucasian male that did it. That's but, but see the details. And so I got all those details. I stood up in front of the student body. I had to sit up in front of thousands of people and I gave my defense. And I said, I want a public apology because you got mamas and grandmamas being threatened. So a defense, you need to get the facts. Y'all with me? I only share that story because it was deeply personal. I still have the front page paper where they got me sitting there like I'm some attorney. They did offer me free law school at that time because I did a pretty good job defending. But the bottom line is this. Don't stand up and speak up unless you know the facts. And so when you give a defense, it's got to be passionate, but it's got to be not just based on emotion. And when people stand up and speak spiritually about religion and about your feelings, what are the details? What are the facts? You want to talk Christianity? Let's talk Bible. That's why we as Christians don't just get caught up in emotions, feelings over facts. And yet, the, and what, this is how it worked. This is interesting. Last piece on this example. The, the young lady who was the uh, editor in chief, I said, I want a full page retraction. Oh, it's our policy to do a retraction. It was about this big on page three. The retraction, we apologize for misleading. I said, yeah, you're gonna tell a lie full page. That was my drop the mic moment back then. So let's go back to our lesson. You understand the defense now? So what is Peter saying? And watch out, I'll give you context on Peter. Peter is saying, Prepare your mind because people are going to lie on you. Prepare your mind because you will suffer. Prepare your mind to give a defense. Stand up, speak up, and state the facts. And he said, be ready to do this how often? Always. Now that you have some context, let's go to our second point of three, the reality of suffering. Brothers, I want to go through each one of these scriptures so people know. I want you to be ready. Get for me. Daniel chapter two, verse 44. Please write these down. I'm going to put them up on the screen. Some of these scriptures we may quote for time's sake later on, but we're not going to quote these. We're going to read them. Every child of God, write down these scriptures. It's on the screen for your benefit. And we're going through every one of them. We're going to start in Daniel two, verse 44. We're then going to go over to Daniel chapter seven and verse 14. Then we're going to Zechariah chapter one and verse 16. Then we're going to Matthew 16, verse 18. Then we're going to go to Acts 2 and 47. And you're welcome in advance because when we go through this, I won't have to do a long invitation at the end. De nada. That means you're welcome. Daniel chapter 2 and the verses 44. Read the Bible. And in the days of these kings. In the day, Daniel, the message of the prophet says, in the days of these kings, and that was during the Roman Empire. Come on. Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom? Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom? God is setting up a kingdom. This is prophetic before it happened in the days of the Roman Empire, not in the 1800s, not in the 1700s, not in the, you know, this is in the days of it during the Roman Empire. AD 33, to be specific, God's going to set up a kingdom. So anything that came after this kingdom of God is not the Lord's church. No, 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 you miss me. During the Roman Empire, God is going to set up a kingdom, read, which shall never be destroyed. So God will set up an everlasting, indestructible kingdom in the days of the Roman Empire. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that we're, going, we're going to court today. Would you want to be in something that came after that? Established by man, all dressed up, a lot of pomp and circumstance, a lot of emotion, religious names, religious titles, super duper religious titles. But God set up one. Amen. Saints. During the Roman Empire, we're going to find out where it was set up and who is the head. If we find a pope, then I suggest you become a Catholic. If. If. You better hold on that if. You see the defense is taking place here. If you find a man or a woman referred to as reverend, I suggest you find one. If, but if this Bible is clear enough to show you who clearly the head is, does a head take ownership? Then I suggest strongly you get in today. So let's let, let the Bible speak. Daniel chapter seven and verse 14. Read. 
Daniel 7 and 14. Come on, brother. And there was given him dominion. And there was given him. If the word that was given him, what? Dominion. Dominion. And glory. And glory. And a kingdom. And a kingdom. That all people. That all people. So the, let me say this. I gave you an example and I included race in that example. The, what I thank God for, see, the, the church the Lord set up is there's no white church, there's no black church, it's just the Lord's church. Racism does not come from God. Man creates that foolishness and that goes both ways. None of us. If you got some uh, beautiful uh, pigmentation, uh, if you will, beautiful. You better not dislike those who don't. If you got, let me put another, if you got a beautiful tan and I woke up this way, you don't you ever diss anybody that doesn't look like you or sound like you. That is sin. Amen, saints. Had to share that. So now go up to verse 13, Gail, because I want to give some better context. Daniel 7, before you get to 14, go to 13. Listen to this. Come on. I saw in the night vision. I saw in the night vision. Yes, sir. And behold, one, and behold, one like the son of man. One like the son of man, capital S, capital S and son. Very important. One like the son of man, i.e. son of God. Read. Came with the clouds of heaven. He came with the clouds of heaven. And came to the ancient of days. He came to the ancient of days. The one who was there in the beginning. Capital A. So the son came to the ancient of days. The, you're talking about the father and the son. Come on. And they brought him near before him. And they brought him near before him. Come on. And there was given him dominion. Oh, and the point. So you can't get. So somebody gave. The father gave the son and there was given him the son of man. What did he get? Dominion. Dominion. That means authority. Come on. And glory and glory. So he's the one that we we give honor, praise and glory to God, not man. Read. And the kingdom. And this son of man was given a kingdom. If you remember what was just read in Daniel 2 and verse 44, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven establish a kingdom which will never be destroyed. Daniel 7 and verse 14. Now the son of man came and he was brought before him and he, the son of man, was given dominion, authority, glory. He's the one that will be to be glorified and honored and praised and a kingdom. Y'all tracking with us? OK, now let's go to Zechariah chapter one and verse 16. They're all on the screen. Read. Therefore, therefore, thus saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. I am returned to Jerusalem. With I will return unto Jerusalem. Hold your point. Now we have a location. Now we have a location. And so for those of you that were holding on to see if Vatican City would come up, you ain't going to find it in the Bible. The Vatican, just another city, just like Toledo, Ohio. All dressed up, all that gold and all this pomp and all that. But nope. And so the Lord said, I will return to where? Read it again, nephew. I am returned to Jerusalem. I am returned to Jerusalem with mercy. With mercies. Here's his last part. Hit every word slowly and hit it with boldness. Come on. My house. My house. Who's speaking? The Lord speaking. My house shall, shall be built. Be built in it. In it. So where did the Lord's church start? Jerusalem. When was it built? In the days of the Roman Empire. AD 33. Where? In Jerusalem. To whom was it given? The son of man. He has dominion, glory, and a, and a kingdom. Hey, Y'all with me? But forget me. Do you see it in your Bible? Anything that came after that didn't start in Jerusalem, anything that came after AD 33 is not the Lord's church. But ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there's more. There's more. Because if you're convinced now, Let's hear from the one who will claim ownership. And I could easily put Isaiah in here. Matter of fact, let's give you a bonus scripture because you're so good, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. We didn't submit this. You're on. So at this point, y'all would have to, as a lawyer, have to submit this to the judge. I want to submit one extra thing. I'm going to give it to the prosecution over here. That's the Satan over here. He ain't got nothing to say when it comes to the word. So I'll give him a copy. Let's go to Isaiah chapter two, verse two and three. Didn't put them on the screen. My apologies. But let's put Isaiah two, two and three up there as well. Isaiah chapter two, verses two and three. We're ahead of schedule. And I love this. Let's go. It's Isaiah chapter two. Isaiah chapter two. I didn't put it on the screen. Say amen if you wrote that down. All right. Isaiah chapter two, verse two and three. We're talking about the reality of suffering in here in a minute. Let's go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. In the last days. In the last days. The mountain of the Lord's house. That the mountain of the Lord's 
shall shall be established be established in the top of the mountain in the top of the mountain shall be exalted above the hill shall be exalted above the hill and all nations and all nations shall flow shall flow unto it unto them it it now if you're tracking very quickly daniel 244 indestructible kingdoms established by god daniel 7 and verse 12 and 13 and 14 son of man given unto him a kingdom dominion and you know, in glory, Zechariah 1 16, the Lord said, My house will be built in Jerusalem. Now we have Isaiah talking about Jerusalem that the, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established above the mountains, exalted above the hills, and all nations. No need for a Jewish church, Gentile church, black church, white church, just the Lord's church. And all nations shall flow unto it. It means singular. Let me just, going back to, uh, I remind my children that are in college that one day they're soon going to get, there's only, there's only one in college right now. Wink, wink. She's sitting to my right. And we are working on resumes right now. That resume needs to go out, internships will follow, and employment will follow in that order. Amen. Yo, with me, I'm just talking to you. She, she probably can still hear me. So it's some, see, if you only got $1, it is in your little purse. Let me look around and see what I got. You can fold it as many times as you want to still one. So we get it. Now, if you got a plurality of dollars, we can go through them and set them up in a denominational order. But let me tell you something right now. If it's it, you only have one. You're all all right. All nations shall flow unto it. Why is that important? Because now let's go to the let's talk. Let's go to the source. You've heard from prophecy. You've heard the prophecy of Daniel. You've heard the prophecy of Zechariah. You've heard the prophecy of Isaiah. But how about let's go to the source. Let's go to the source. Matthew chapter 16. And for time's sake, we got to just hit verse 18. We recognize that Jesus Christ came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi in Matthew 16, beginning at verse 13. Jesus Christ asked the question, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Some of them said, you're Jeremiah, you're Elijah, you're, you're Moses, just one of the prophets. But then Jesus asked the question, whom do you say that I am? And now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as we role play here a little bit to, to make an effective point, who do you say Jesus is? Don't answer out loud. What does Jesus mean to you? Well, I love the Lord. Okay. I believe in the Lord. Well, the Bible, James says the devils also believe and tremble. So he's got that. So the devil is sitting right here. I'm not, I'm not pointing you off. The devil is my virtual seat right here. The devils also believe and tremble. Prosecution. The devils also believe and tremble. So your belief in Jesus ain't enough. Jesus said in Matthew 16, whom do you say that I am? Peter said, let's pick it up at about verse 16. Or 17. Matthew 16. And Simon Peter answered and said. What verse you reading? Give me the verse. 16. I want to make sure you all track Matthew 16 and 16. So I paraphrase 13 through 15. Now, here's Peter's response. Matthew 16, verse 16, for the benefit of your notes and for the clarity for those online. Read. And Simon Peter answered and said. And Simon Peter answered and said. He's answering the question. Isn't it interesting that Peter is also the one who said, be ready to give an answer of the, meek, of, of, of the hope that's in you. Peter's the one that said, always be ready, saints. And now Peter's the one that Simon Peter got up and said what? Thou art the Christ. Thou means you are the Christ. Come on. The son of the living God. The son of the living God. And Come Jesus on. answered and said unto him. So Peter was ready to give an answer. The same Peter in 1 Peter 3.15 that said, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer of the hope of the, of the hope and the meekness of the hope that's in you with meekness and fear. I'll get it out. And Peter said, you're the Christ. You're the you're the head. You're the one that Daniel talked about. You're the one that Isaiah prophesied about. You are the son of God. Listen to what Jesus said in response in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 17. Read. And Jesus answered and said unto him. And Jesus answered and said unto him. Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Bar-Jonah means son of Jonah. Blessed are you. You are blessed, Simon Peter, son of Jonah. Come on. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. Man did not tell this to you. Man cannot take credit for what you said. Your faith, your belief, your confession that I am the son of God. 
flesh and blood cannot, did not reveal this unto you. Who did? But my father. But my father. Which is in heaven. Which is in heaven. So glory be to God for what you just said. Y'all still with me? Listen to what Jesus says next. Here we go. This is so important. If you want to make it to heaven, listen to what the Bible is saying. Because Jesus is now going to fulfill the prophecy. Daniel talked about it. Isaiah talked about it. Zechariah noted it. And now Jesus himself, the only one that came from heaven down to earth and back to heaven, is going to say this before he goes back to heaven. Read Matthew 16, verse 18. Come on. And I say also unto thee. Jesus says, I say also unto thee. I, Jesus, speaking to Peter. Come on. That thou art Peter. You are Peter. And upon this rock. Wait a minute now. You know, Peter said, you are the Christ. You know what Christ said right back? I love to talk to people like this. He's, I'm telling you. But you got to practice it because you, you mess it up. You may like, get fired or something. So, no, I'm serious. When you, when you talk to people straight up, Peter said, you're the Christ. And Jesus says, and you're Peter. Did y'all catch what just happened there? It wasn't disrespectful because some would have Peter to be the head of the church. He said, he said, you are the Christ. Thou art the Christ and thou art Peter. No disrespect, just the truth. That's like going to, if you know somebody's a liar, it's like, you know what? Hey, you know, I'm telling you, no, you're not. You're telling a lie. You're not trying to hurt anybody. You're just telling them the truth. You got to practice this. I got a few years of practice with it. You have to practice. When you talk to people that way, watch what happens in 2024. You want to deal with as much foolishness. People come to you like, well, you know, it's like, so you're bringing me some foolishness. Is that what you're doing this morning? So when you talk to people that way, so you mean to tell me that the teacher's trying to get ready, I'm trying to pass this class and get out of this high school, and you're going to bring me some foolishness talking about, can you cop off my paper? Is that what you're doing? They're going to go somewhere else. Because it's like, not today. Can you all do that in 2024? See, you are the Christ, and you are Peter. So Matthew 16, verse 8, I want to make that point because Jesus is very intentional with his words. We have to be more intentional. Don't just resolution, I'm going to be healthier. I'm going to make more money. What are you doing? I'm going to be more faithful. How are you doing that so far in 14 days of this new calendar year? Matthew 6, 18. And I say also unto thee. He said, and I say also unto thee. That thou art Peter. You are Peter. Come on. And upon this rock. And upon this rock, this firm foundation the solid confession that you made because let's break down peter's name peter's name he said thou art petros write it down p-e-t-r-o-s o is long p-e-t-r-o-s thou art petros you are a small stone or pebble but upon this rock p-e-t-r-a upon this petra this solid firm foundation what did Jesus say he would do? Here it is. I will build Ladies my gentlemen church. Of, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, here's the kicker. Who owns it? Who's the head of the church? Jesus says, upon this rock, the confession that you made that I am the Christ, son of the living God, I will build my church. So now we have the facts. But Jesus says, I will build my church. And tell me about hell. Because the devil, he, he, so you can see his face over there. I'm just saying, of course, I'm role playing. You know, he ain't happy about this. But will the devil do everything he can to, to try to get tear down the church? Yes. What did Jesus say? Here it is. And the gates of hell and the gates of hell shall not prevail, shall not prevail against it. them. It. So there's a, there's a lot of people. You can't say there's only one church. The gates of hell should not prevail against it. it. So if you're sitting here right now, how can you think you if you're a God fearing person, how can you sit here with a clear conscience? And say there's more than one church. When Jesus says, my church, it. My wife, she. If I were to say my wives, I would have a hard time watching a game today. She's like, yeah, let, let them take care of you this afternoon. Just role playing. Y'all all right? So in all seriousness, we understand basic English. Basic pronoun. Jesus says, upon this rock will I. Who said he would do that? Peter? No, Jesus. You are a small pebble. On the foundation, the confession you made, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not. I got it. The gates of hell shall prevail. Will not have victory against it. The Lord has one church. Daniel didn't lie. Zechariah didn't lie. 
Isaiah didn't lie. And Christ certainly did not lie. So in the days of the Roman Empire, Acts chapter 2, we're going to fast forward right after in, in Acts chapter 2. When Peter, give me 36, give me 36 through 38, then drop down to 47. 36, 38. I'm, I won't have to extend the invitation after this. I'll just go to my final points. Come on. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Listen it, to this. Therefore, therefore, that all the house of Israel know assuredly. So now Jesus promised to build. He said, I will build. So it was not in existence in Matthew 16. Jesus had not died yet. So the Bible says in days. So in Acts chapter 2, verse 36, let the house of Israel know. Assuredly, assuredly, that God hath made that same Jesus, that God hath made that God the Father, the Ancient of Days, hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified. Whom ye have crucified. Now this is after Jesus has died, after he was buried, after he rose from the dead. Now we have a new covenant because see, a New Testament is not enforced until after the testator dies. Last will and testament. That's when the you re reap the benefits after death. So now that Jesus said, the same Jesus whom you crucified, God made him, the Father made the Son, Lord, there's your glory and dominion, Daniel, Lord, and Christ, and Christ. Amen? So now, if you hear that, that there's only one team you can be on, imagine some of these folks that are packing their bags, going home for the end of the football season. If they said, you can go ahead and suit up for another team that's still playing, they would get on that. Some of them would. You have an opportunity to get a chip, get a championship. But you got you in the wrong team. You get another chance. God's giving everybody a chance today. Are you rolling with Satan? He's going to make you feel good, give you everything you need and say, you know what? You're the boss. That's what he's doing over here. The prosecution. They want you to they want you to lose your soul. So if you're comfortable riding with the devil where you're the boss, you're the judge and jury. You're running your souls at risk. But on the on, on team Christ. One church, the church of Christ. The family of God, the pillar and ground of the truth, very many different designations, but one church, non-denominational, anti-denominational and pre before any denomination. Because in the Bible, there's only one church. Where did all these other ones come from? You can look up their own history. They will tell you their history in 18. They're going to show a big, big head man sitting there right there. Here's our founder. You can he riding with the devil, too. Because Christ already built it. Well, who has to come after and create McDougal's? Y'all miss that. You want some artificial bootleg, uh, unauthorized. No, there's a lot of that. That's denomination. Christ built one church. Acts 2.36. Let the whole house of Israel know surely the same Jesus you, whom you crucified. God made him Lord and Christ. When they heard that, here's how I want. Here's how we all should respond. Read. When they heard this. They were pricked in their heart. When they heard this, Acts 2 verse 37. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Say, so here we go again. Here we go again. Their mind was pricked. So hopefully something that's said today will cause you to think about where you are spiritually. What team are you on? Because guess what? It's may hurt. There's only two teams. His and Christ. The devil's and Christ. You don't believe that? You read John chapter 8 sometime. Abraham's our father. Well, if Abraham was your father, you believe in me, Jesus told him. He told him very straight. You, your father is the devil. I mean, you no harm with that. But if you are not a member of that one church, you are still Justifying in your mind, telling everybody why you got to wait, why you got to do all this. You're still riding with Satan. You ever been in a toxic relationship? You justify people been in an abusive relationship. They're still justifying. Well, he only hit me when he mad. I'm not minimizing domestic violence at all. No, 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 no. I'm not. Min I'm not. No, no. This is serious. I've had to deal with this in the in juvenile justice context for 30 plus years. People justifying a raggedy man, put their hands on him. But I just want I just want to make him mad. No, no. He he's the problem. Get out of that. Amen, somebody. Oh, we be here a little while today because y'all. I'm gonna make sure y'all get this. Don't justify for Satan. Well, I need to make sure I understand everything before I become a child of God. Who knows everything but God? You know enough to get in, and then once you get in, you grow. That's an excuse. But yet, if they got shoes on sale, buy one get ten free. Let me make sure it's the right quality. See, so you sit in that store. Quit playing games with God. We are very decisive and it's something we really want. We justify when we're just sitting here playing games. Let the whole house of Israel, Acts 2.36 has got to bring you back. Let the whole house of Israel know assuredly the same Jesus whom you crucified, God made him Lord and Christ. Not John the Baptist, not Peter, nobody else but Christ. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And here we go. And what did they say? And said unto Peter. And they said to, said to whom? 
to Peter. Ain't that something? The same Peter said, always be, be ready to give an answer. They said to Peter, the same Peter. If Peter was ahead of the church, he'd say, obey me. Peter's the same one that said, you are the Christ. And Jesus says, and you are also Peter. Small pebble, small stone. I am the Christ. I'm the rock. Upon that confession that you made. So now, they said unto Peter, come on. And to the rest of the apostles. And to the rest of the apostles. Men and brethren. Men and brethren. What shall we do? They wanted, we got to do something. If it's sinner's prayer, then this is it. Let's find out. You're going to find out what you must do to be saved right here. Men and brethren, what shall we do? What did Peter say? Then Peter said unto them. Then Peter, who was ready to give an answer, who was ready to give an answer, said unto them. Repent. Repent. Change your mind. Come on. And be baptized. So remember, Peter understood and he made the confession that we all must make that Jesus is the son of God. So based on that belief, Peter says, repent, change your mind and be baptized. Baptized. How many of them? Every one of you. Every one of you. For what purpose? In the name of Jesus Christ. By the authority of Jesus Christ, because Daniel said he's going to be given glory, dominion and, and a kingdom. So Jesus has the authority. You do it in the name of Jesus Christ. You are you have to repent. Turn from your sinful ways. Turn to God. Be repent and be baptized. Every one of you, by the in the name of Jesus Christ, for for the remission of sin. The only way you can get rid of your sins is to be baptized into Christ. So if you're sitting here today and you've done the sin, you've said you prayed a sinner's prayer. You, you you're not you're not saved. Let me stand right in the middle so the camera can see me. You're not saved. I'm not the authority. How dare you tell me that? No no no. You just read it in the Bible. You can't leave here saying, no, no, I don't agree. I don't agree with what he said. No, you, you no, don't put me in that. I'm just a counselor. I'm a servant. I'm a steward on behalf of the almighty God. You can read it for yourself. Repent, be baptized, every one of you for the remission of sins. And then once you do that, you will receive what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You don't tear. You don't dance for the Holy Ghost. You obey God and you receive the Holy Ghost. Now. You have two choices. You can accept or reject. You can receive or reject. Those who gladly received, stay in the text. Acts 2, verse 41. Come on. Then they that gladly received his word. Then they that gladly received his word. Were baptized. Did, said the sinner's prayer. Were baptized. Got on their knees and uh, sent their, sent their uh, tithes. Were baptized. Were baptized. When? In the same day. Same day. Today is a day of salvation. In the same day, January 14, 2024, a year we've never seen, a day we've never seen. But yet you got the truth today. So you got to make a decision. But you can either receive it or reject it. There is no in between. And the same day was added unto them. How many got baptized? About 3,000 souls. We got plenty of water. And we ain't got 3,000 people in here. We can record the game. It's all right. We got work to do. Same day was added unto them 3,000 souls. But now they were added. One final point, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as it relates to the church. To what were they added? You can't be added to what doesn't exist. They couldn't be added to the Catholic Church because it was that was 606 AD. You couldn't be added to a Baptist church. Couldn't be added to a Presbyterian Lutheran. You couldn't be added, you couldn't be none of, nothing else existed. So to what were they added? Remember the words of Daniel, Zechariah, Isaiah, and the and our Savior Himself, Jesus. In Jerusalem, AD 33, one church. So can you prove to me, if you can prove to me that they were that the church was in existence right there, if I'm if I believe what's being said, I believe Jesus is the Son of God, He died, buried, rose again. I believe He's the Son of God. I'm willing to turn from all the stuff I've ever read or taught or read online. I'm willing to be a Christian today. If you can show me that they were added to the church. Thank you. Because we're, the Bible's gonna do that right now. Acts 2, verse 47. Finish it. Praising God. Praising God. Because again, watch this now. Who gets all praise, honor, and glory? God, not man. Acts 2, 47. Praising God. Come on. And having favor with all the people. And having favor with all the people. And the Lord. Wait a minute. Slow him down. And the Lord. Come on. Added. Added. To the church. To the church. Daily. Daily. Such as should, Such be, as saved. should be saved. Translate that. The Lord added those who were just baptized that same day to the church that Jesus said he would build. The one that Daniel said would come to fruition. The same one that was built in Jerusalem on AD, in AD 33. The church that belongs to Christ. There's only one. So at the appropriate time, we're going to sing a song. And it ain't right now. You have a decision to make. You have enough information to you have enough information right now to save your soul or to lose your soul. But you won't say you didn't know. Because you decided to show up here today to this place, you just heard exactly what needs what how you can save your soul. 
Some of you've been spiritual. Some of you've been spiritual fugitives for too long. You just bounce from place to place to place. Just because you hear the word of God, you will not hear the same thing everywhere. But you got the Bible. Forget me. You have enough. It's all on the screen. Take a picture. Pull your phone up. Take a picture of it. Because if you don't have that, I'm going to call an audible here, but I want to just do one more thing today. I told you about one. What defense? Do we got to set God apart? Do you have, are you ready to sanctify God in your heart? Are you ready to respond to the Lord? Because suffering was and is a reality. So if now I got to give it, I got to give some encouragement to the saints that are here. We got saints that are suffering. I look to my left and I see the Stevens and Ortiz family. God bless y'all. Their heart is heavy right now. Their heart is heavy. We're going to finalize our brother Leonard on the 27th of this month. They've lost family members, multiple family members within the last five years. It's sobering. Suffering is real. So when we suffer, I could think of no suffering hurts. Not minimize suffering, but if we're going to suffer, suffer as a Christian. Be with the saints. Because suffering was and is a reality. I'm going to fast forward now. These scriptures are on the screen, but I got to go through this. So now let's look at some quick examples. So when the church came into existence in Acts chapter 2, amen. But guess what? Look at, look at uh, Acts 8 and verse 1. I'll read for time's sake. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against a church, the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Did the church face persecution? Yes, it did. What kind of persecution? Great persecution. Not against a church, the church, the one church that was in existence. Amen. If you understand that. I'm, I'm wrapping up Acts chapter 12, beginning at verse number one. I need four more minutes. I'm done. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of what? Of the church. The church has to face persecution because the devil ain't happy with you and me being a part of the winning team. And he killed. Saints lost their lives. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. King Herod killed, had James killed. And because he saw it please the Jews, this is how the devil works. Everybody else is doing it. Why aren't you doing it? See, we, we human beings, we, we peer pressure, we give in to that. I've given in to peer pressure in the past. Anybody else? About 10 honest people in here. It's real. The way other people think about us and respond to us has an effect on us. We're human beings. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. The same Peter. Then were the days of unleavened bread, Passover. And when the, he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. So Peter's put in prison. Song leader, come on. He put Peter in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Watch this. Attending after Easter, the Passover, to bring him forth to the people. Watch what happens here. This is a point I want to make to the saints of God. It just makes them feel better. You sitting there, but you may be there a few minutes, uh, but it's OK. It'll be quicker for the transition. Saints, get this. I'm going to take it back. Saints, get this. We have to suffer. When we make the decision consciously and faithfully to obey God, the devil wants to raise all kinds of hell in your life and mine. And here's where we have to understand. This is the 14th day of this new calendar year. People close to you, just like in the military, your comrade may choose to. Sometimes people go to the other side. You, you ever heard of a double agent? Sometimes those that have, you, you've grown, grown close to may choose not to fight on the team anymore, may leave the team, may lose their life. But what are you going to do? You can put down your quote unquote weapon. You can put down your sword and stop fighting. Because the devil's not going. He's like, I'm not. The devil's not going to stop until he tries to get pick off, off, pick off every one of us. So you see, John, James got killed. Great persecution against the church. Then he said, let's get Peter too, and he put Peter in prison. And he had all kind of guards around him. But not only that, Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Look at what Herod did. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Watch this now. You want to talk about uh, security, law enforcement, corrections? Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Guards outside, door locked, 
two soldiers. You're bound by chains in between two soldiers. You ain't going nowhere, says man. We got to go through to get to. I don't care how bad it seems for you, how bad it seems for me. I got to close with this point. You know there's only one church now. I don't need to extend that any further. But I got to encourage some saints who are struggling. Peter's locked down. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison. He smote Peter. He nudged Peter in, on the side and raised him up and said, arise up quickly. Get up, Peter. It's time to go. But I got two chains on me. This is how we sound. I got two chains. And look, I got two people. And there's even a man outside the door. Get up, Peter. Insert your name. Get up, Gail. It's time to go. And it's chains. He didn't say he took a key. His chains fell off from his hands. You know what sometimes we do? No, I feel better with keeping the chains on because I don't want to offend anybody. It's time to go. Are you ready to go? When it's time to step up, are you ready to step up? When it's time to tell a friend that you care about, that's a lot. Are you, are you prepared to do that? Instead of, well, you got a point. What do you mean you got a point? Anything that's not in here, you ain't got a point. Not biblically. That's like me saying, you know what? Everybody should eat kale today. Some of you be like, ugh. That's my opinion. Amen. Keep Keep things compartmentalized where they need to be. When it's time to go, they said, Peter, no, God had a plan for Peter. And the angel said unto him, gird thyself and bind on thyself, put on your shoes. And so he did. And he saith unto him, cast thy garment, get rid of that clothes. They put you on the prison clothes and follow me. I got to close right here. We got to go through to get to the same Peter who suffered was the same one who taught others about suffering, defending the faith. To, he's, he wrote to the saint in our lesson text, the saint, he wrote to the saints at Asia Minor who had already gone through stuff. I'm going to deal with this tonight at First Peter 1. They had already gone through some stuff. They were going through some stuff. And Peter, who went through all of this, encouraged them. And we close with this scripture, I promise you. I, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, a season. I started with it. I will end with it. For There's 32 teams in the National Football League. Some of their seasons are over. No shade. Facts. Let it summer. Some of y'all still getting over. A season is a defined period of time. Now let's deal with that reality in spiritual sense. You, Some of you may be in the midst of a storm. It's a storm season for you. Did you see the news in Buffalo yesterday? You see how it was snowing? They, they canceled a football game. The governor intervened and said, if people get on the road, people will lose their lives. They cannot make it to that stadium. So some of you may be during a real cold season right now. Some of you might have just gotten out of a storm. And some of you are like, I'm good. Well, you're headed for a storm. But the question is, are you ready? Though now for a season, if need be. Ye are in heaviness through manifold, multiple, a plurality of temptations. Things are pulling on you. You don't know which way is up, but you're here. That the trial, here it is, back to legal terms. What is a trial? Presentation of evidence to make a point. Presentation of evidence so that you can have a proper judgment. The trial of your faith. Our faith has to be put to the test. Being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The lesson is yours. Jordan, go ahead and take control of this. Take it to the take it to the uh, final slide. He's bad like that. <laughs> and y'all can't even see it. But the bottom line is this. The suffering. We're going to deal with everything else tonight on what Peter had to say to the saints at Asia Minor. Are you pre are you prepared to suffer? Are you prepared to go through the trial? But most importantly, how can you go through life? If you're here today, today's a day. God may not give you tomorrow. Thursday night, I was up at, I think it was Boyd Funeral Home on Sistrunk in Fort Lauderdale, seeing a whole lot of grown men cry. Our fraternity brother, at the late Albert Gibbs, who died at 1158 on New Year's Eve. People went back to his college days and how he helped people back then and the things he did. 
I told him I'm keeping the text message he sent me. I was reading through it yesterday. All the things he wanted to do to help kids this year. We planned that he didn't make it. Don't think you got another day. We were praying happy new year, all this stuff, all this ceremony we go through, right? Happy New Year. May God bless us in 2024. Well, God has blessed you to see this day. What are you going to do about it? The evidence has been presented. To leave here and not obey the gospel, you are saying, I hear. If you don't understand, I'll be at the back door and answer every biblical question you have about this lesson. So you have everything you need to make an informed decision, not emotional, informed decision. I got to hit that nail one more time. Why leave here again saying, I'm good for now. Who said you're good for now? I have a little brother through Big Brothers Big Sister. He attends Miami Northwestern High School. I took him home, took him to a heat game this week. Then I took him home. He said, two kids are fighting right over there, Big Brother. And then some others jumped. Central's playing Northwestern. Y'all know this story. And they got shot. He pulled out a gun and he shot. Shot, I think, seven times. These are kids. Two freshmen in high school. Our kids go to school and I pray that they can come back home. You go to work. So the sobering part, Jesus taught it clearly what you must do. It's on the screen. We've already taught it. This is everything Jesus taught. Are you going to do what's right while you have the opportunity? We would jump at an opportunity. You can name, I won't even mention any name. Name your favorite musical artist. Name your favorite actor, actress. They said, here's two free tickets to go see them. You, you, wouldn't, be, you wouldn't sit in your seat. Where? That's just an example, by the way. But yet Jesus is saying, come. Come. And yet we say, well, maybe it's a more convenient time. So here's what you ought to do today. You trust God. You do obey him today. A song's about to be sung. I'll give you all I can give today. Case closed. We're going to sing this song. Even if you just raise your hand, I'll come where you are. And I'll walk with you. I will ask you a question. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? If you respond to the affirmative, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We're going to baptize you today. Your sins are washed away. You're going to do what the Bible said you need to do. Your sins are watched when you become a child of God today. And then you need to, we will train you, we will help you, we will teach you through God's word how to overcome and get through suffering in order to get to heaven. A song has been selected. You need to respond. You may do so right now as we together stand and sing. Won't you come? Time. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. What a glory he shares on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowships we, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will. Where he sends, we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey.